Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I talk about Parkinson's disease from a daughter's perspective. I try to break down the science in a way that actually makes sense. Today we're diving into something really fascinating, which is what causes a rise in dopamine in a healthy brain and how that compares to someone living with Parkinson's disease. It's not the same, it helps explain why things like motivation, pleasure, and mood can feel very different for people with Parkinson's disease. Okay, let's get started. So, dopamine is a neurotransmitter, which is a kind of chemical messenger in the brain. It plays a major role in how we feel pleasure, stay motivated, and even how we move. In a healthy brain, dopamine flows like a smooth operating system. It gets released when something enjoyable happens kind of like the brain's reward signal. So let's say you pet a soft puppy, see a beautiful rainbow, eat your favorite pizza, binge watch a great TV show. Your brain says, hey, this feels good and releases dopamine. It's that rush of joy, comfort, or motivation that follows. And it happens almost instantly. In people without Parkinson's disease, these pleasant experiences trigger activity in the mesolimbic pathway, also known as the brain's reward circuit. This includes areas like the ventral tegmental area and the nucleus accumbens, which light up with dopamine during happy moments. These dopamine surges help us feel good, form positive memories, and want to do these things again. It's also part of what motivates us to get out of bed, call a friend, or go for a walk. Think of dopamine like a spark that keeps us and our emotional engine running. Now here's where things shift. In someone with Parkinson's disease, the brain's ability to make and use dopamine is significantly reduced. Why? Because the cells in the substantia nigra, the part of the brain that produces dopamine, are damaged or dying. So what does that mean in real life? Well, the same experiences, petting a puppy, watching a favorite movie, or hearing good news, might not trigger the same dopamine response. The reward signal is weaker, or in some cases it doesn't come through at all. And that can feel like having less joy from activities that used to be exciting, a lack of motivation to do things, more flat moods, or even depression, not because of attitude, but because of brain chemistry. Petting a puppy, the normal brain, big smile, dopamine spike. Parkinson's brain, neutral expression, little or no dopamine response. Understanding this difference isn't just about science. It helps us have more compassion. If you or someone you love has Parkinson's and just doesn't seem excited about things anymore, it's not about being ungrateful or lazy. It's chemistry. It's dopamine or the lack of it. And this explains why dopamine replacement therapy, like levodopa, can sometimes improve not just movement, but also mood and motivation. But even that has its limits and doesn't fully restore the reward system. What can help? Well, even with dopamine challenges, there are some things that can help. Number one, routine movement. Exercise has been shown to trigger dopamine in new ways. Number two, music therapy. Rhythm and melody can lift someone's mood. Number three, social connections. Even if it feels hard, being around others can create small positive boosts. And number four is mindfulness and nature. Slowing down and appreciating moments, like that rainbow, can still bring emotional relief even without the full dopamine kick. The key is to try different things. Go easy on yourself. And remember, just because your brain doesn't react the same way doesn't mean the moment is, isn't meaningful to you. So thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who might need a little insight today. Don't forget to subscribe for more Parkinson's focused videos. And, you know, I really want to share the information that I find. 
I've lost my mom recently, but I'm going to continue making these videos because I think this information is so important. And I think by knowing what to expect and knowing why things are happening just really makes um, understanding the disease a lot easier.